Hello and welcome to the eighth video in this series for Beginners Programming Python 3. In this video we're going to write a little program where we guess a number that's been randomly generated by the computer between 1 and 20, including both of those. The way this will work is we will have to generate a random number using Python. And we're going to, to do that we're going to do something we haven't done before. If I start writing my program here, you remember that if I put print and just put hello, that you remember from the very early videos I just run this program and hopefully we get hello. We do, good. You'll remember that print is a built-in function to the standard library. We had a look at the definition of print in the documentation and we saw that there are parameters we can give it at the end of the line and things like that. And we can give it the variables that we want it to print separated by a certain separator. And print comes built in to Python. Well, in the standard library of Python, there are lots of what are called modules as well. And random numbers can be generated using functionality from the random module. And why doesn't this come built in to Python like print? Well, there are lots and lots and lots of modules for Python as part of the standard library and outside. And we'll see lots of these later in the course. And it makes little sense to bloat up your program importing everything that's available every time you run Python. It's better to import the bits you need to use. And modules can be viewed as files of code like you're writing in this course. They contain functions much like print that we can then reuse just as we use the print function. The only difference is in this case, we'll have to import the module so that we can have access to the functions inside that module. Otherwise, it works exactly the same way as it has done with, when we've been using print. I've got the documentation open here for the, rand uh, the random module, a description of generating Sweda random numbers. There's lots of detail inside here. We're going and lots of functionality you'll see as well that come with the module. And we're going to be interested in one of them called randint, which is here. And now you can see the randint here. And you ought to read that just as you read print when we looked in the early videos in this course at the definition of print in the built-in functions. Randint the same, it takes two parameters. So we'll give a value, comma, another value. And it says it gives us then a random integer such that a is less than or equal to the number it gives us, which is less than or equal to b. So if I use randint with 1, 20, I will get a random integer from 1 to 20, including the 1 and the 20, which is exactly what I want in the program. So going back to our code then, how do we use the functionality in our random module? Well, we just need to import random. And that's all we need to do. And now we can use all of the functions that are inside the documentation for random. So as a little demonstration, then I'm going to say a new variable, call this our number. And what this does here is I'm saying I want to use a function from the random module, which I've imported here. And I want to use the function randint, which we know from the documentation exists. And I want a to be one and b to be 20. So I'll get a number from one to 20. So I'll run the program then. And you can see I get number 14. I run it again and I get the number two. I run it again, I get the number two and once more and still a two and now a five. So we're generating random numbers from one to 20. So what I'd like then is like a program that says to the user, please guess the num my number and asks the user for a guess. And each time the user enters a guess, compares it with the randomly generated number. If the user is incorrect, tells the user whether their guess was higher or lower, and then asks again the user for input. In other words, we're going to loop round and round. And we want to keep looping until the guess is correct or the user tries to quit. In other words, we want a continuous loop or an infinite loop. So we're going to do that with a while loop. And you remember from the loops video that the condition before the double point, this, this, as long as this condition remains two, true, the code in the while loop will be executed. So if we type while true, essentially we'll always keep executing until we get a break. So the first thing we'll do then is ask the user for their guess. So we'll get the user guess, which remember will be a string. And now what I want to say is if the user's guess is a letter Q, then we'll break out of this loop so that we at least we have a way of escaping the program. And last but not least, I'll print done so that we know that the program has ended. So let's just run this here. So the number was 13 and let's enter a guess. It doesn't matter what. And you can see that whatever text we enter or numbers here, we keep getting asked for a new guess because the loop keeps executing. This condition is always true. The only way we can break out is actually to enter the letter Q. And if we do, then our user guesses Q and we'll get this break and we'll break out of the loop. So I'll press Q 
and now we've got done, the program is finished. You have to be very, very careful with while loops in this way because you can easily end up with an infinite loop in your program then blocking and you'll need to either quit the console or do control C or something to try and get out of it. And if you're very processor intensive, that can really block the rest of your computers. You have to be a little bit careful. Assuming we've got our user guess, at the moment it's a string, I'd like it to be an integer. So I'm going to cast the user guess string into an integer. And the way to do this is quite simple. I'm of course making the assumption here that the user's guess is an integer that they've entered. We'll deal in later videos with the case where it isn't and then we get an error, but for now we'll keep it simple. I'm going to type int, I want it to be the type integer, and just wrap brackets around the user guess. And that will cast the user's guess now into an integer. The other thing I'd like to do is I want a, a variable called num guesses to keep track of the number of guesses the user's made. And I'm going to put this just at the top below the print hello and set that to zero. Now the user hasn't pressed Q to quit. So now what we'll do is we'll enter or we'll increment, sorry, the number of guesses that the user has made. So num guesses is now equal to num guesses plus one. We'll just print that out to see uh, what's happening. So we'll print the user guess We'll get, a, we'll get rid of this line in a moment. I just want to check everything's working. So let's run the program. So we'll enter our guess and that was one guess and that was our guess we can see there. We'll enter another one and our guess is now two. We'll enter another one. We've made three guesses and so on. So that seems to be working. I'll type Q and we quit out of the program. So our num guesses counter is working and also uh, our user guess is being read in correctly as well because we're printing out our converted integer here and everything looks okay. So now what we need is a little bit of logic to see whether the user has indeed guessed our number. And if the user has guessed our number, then we'll print, well done, and you took a certain number of guesses. And then we'll break. So let's just see that in action and working then. So the guess there is two, I'll guess four and get it wrong. It wants another one, now I'll guess the correct, and I get well done, you took two guesses. Okay, that's quite nice. The game's actually working, but we'd like some advice to the player that if, in the case they got it wrong, we want to at least give them a hint whether they were high or low. So first of all, we'll print that the guess was wrong. And now we'll ask the question, if their guess was lower than our number, then we'll print that our number is higher than their guess. Otherwise, obviously our, lower, our number is lower. And that's all we need to do then to have quite a full working program here with some hints as well. So let's have a look at this working then on the screen. So we know that the computer's number is six. So I don't need to spend ages messing around. Let's enter eight. And it says wrong guess. My number is lower than eight. Enter your guess again. Now I'll enter three. It says wrong guess. My number is higher than three, which is correct. Now I'll enter six and it says well done. You took three guesses and we've completed the game. Good, so that's it then for this video. That's a nice little program which uh, does something slightly useful, allows you to interact with the computer at least, and also introduces most of the concepts that we've covered in the videos, the previous videos in this whole course. So I hope you enjoyed that and it was clear. If there are any questions or anything, then feel free to leave a comment on YouTube. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one.